to our newer subscribers, I want to introduce you to our 1973 Ford Bronco that we will be restoring in our daily Bronco series. And to our OG subscribers who have hung in with us for three years and, and you know, seen some crawling progress, I promise you there is a whole lot that's already been done and we are bringing those videos out to you now. In this video, you may find some things out that you didn't know about what we're doing to this Bronco. Now we're going to bring you a video history of where this Bronco's come from until today. So this is kind of an intro or reintroduction to the Stormtrooper, which is our 73 Ford Bronco right behind us here that we started a restoration project on three years ago. Um, there's a, a history to this uh, that many of you know about, but a lot of you who are new subscribers probably haven't heard a lot about this. So I thought I would just reintroduce this, talk about the plans that we have for this Bronco and the fact that we have already started into a big portion of it. So wanted to kind of give you a small update and then this week we're going to start our series on the 73 Stormtrooper and kind of mix in new Bronco videos with it. So the whole thing started in 2019 when uh, another YouTube channel, and that would be Matt's Garage, uh, decided to get out of their project uh, due to a lot of other things and I had the opportunity at that point to purchase that Bronco and continue what he had started. And so that's where we we're at right here. When I picked it up, it was basically shell had been rebuilt. And also several of the driveline components had been rebuilt as well. And then I just had to basically finish the body, paint the body, and then get the engine running and things like that. Get it basically reassembled at that point. Now in this particular case, the actual, I've never painted a car from scratch. I had primed a car, I painted parts and things like that, but I'd never painted an actual vehicle from scratch. So this was the first time that we had done that and it took a, quite a long time for us, not only to prep the body, but also to figure out how we were gonna paint it, what we were gonna paint it in, and get the right equipment for it, and things like that. So that was its own series altogether, and I'll have that down in the description so you can check out our painting of this vehicle in our garage. But we got it accomplished, and I think it turned out rather nice. Uh, there's a lot of orange peel on it, obviously, but 
I put a lot of clear coat on this body. So uh, when I go and buff this out, I've got plenty of clear coat to buff through. So I think it's going to turn out fine. And when I put it in the sun and take a look at it, it just looks awesome. So now that I've got the body actually painted inside and out, I flipped the vehicle upside down and I actually sprayed bed liner through the bottom of it so that would be extra durable. And so that got completed as well. So the body for the most part is completed. I still am going to put the classic white Ranger stripes on the vehicle. So I'm, I'm still going to do that. And uh, as you can see, I'm keeping it an uncut Bronco. Now this Bronco came to me with a uh, 1997 Explorer drivetrain essentially. So I've got the, the engine, I've got a 4R70W transmission, and then the Dana 20 that came out of the original Bronco and I'm mating those together. So I've finished the Dana 20 build. That is, that is also in the description. I finished the transmission rebuild, which we have right down here. The Far 70W is rebuilt. I have not published that yet, so I will publish that probably this week as just a separate video because I know a lot of you probably aren't interested in seeing one of those rebuilt. And then I also have the short block finished, and that's what has taken me the most amount of time. And you would think that assembling an engine is easy, and it is except for the fact that I, I picked a manufacturer for my rotating kit that basically screwed me. And I'm gonna go into that in a later video. I don't wanna publish negative videos like that, but the whole cheap parts are the most expensive parts you can buy analogy was exactly what happened to me. And the company that I chose not only screwed me over, but then screwed me over a second time and then screwed me over a third time. Uh, so I'm done with that company finally finished with the shore block and I can just write it all off at this point as Lessons learned, but I'm going to tell you about those lessons so that you can stay away from the stuff that happened to me Now I took that Explorer motor and I actually had it bored out 30 over and I put long stroke pistons and crank in there. So it's actually a 347 stroker Explorer motor and it's going to have the stock GT40 heads on it, but I'm going to port them so that they're a higher flowing head. I'm going to put a new spring kit on it as well so that the higher lift in the valve uh, isn't going to bind the springs. And then I'm going to put in uh, what I think is probably the best cam for this motor into this motor as well. I'm going to finish off with the stock Explorer GT40 intake and computer so that it's an all stock basically running motor, except that it's a 347, which means I'm going to have to reprogram the computer and things like that. But I honestly think this can be done. I've heard about it being done and I think it would be exciting to do that. If in the end it doesn't work out, I can always pull everything off and put a carburetor on it or get an aftermarket EFI to put on there. So I'm not really too worried about it. I think I can get it done and I think it's going to look great. Now my expectation for the horsepower and torque in this motor, I honestly think that we're going to be in the high 300s to maybe 400 in horsepower and I think we're going to be over 400 in torque. This thing is actually going to give the new Bronco a run for its money, I think because this will be a much lighter vehicle than the new Bronco is. So this will be fun to do an all out drag race in this thing when we get it finished. Now the hardest thing I think is coming up actually, which is going to be the wiring of this vehicle with the old Explorer harness with the engine to all of the electronics and everything that I've got in the car. And that one is probably gonna take the longest, but everything else should be pretty plug and play. I'm about to bring the chassis in later this week or early next week so I can start getting the engine transmission and uh, transfer case all lined up. Gonna have the drive lines cut and lengthened so that I can get them in and then run fuel lines, hopefully a, a much bigger fuel tank, one of the 23 gallon fuel tanks. Now, all of that said, the paint or the body work took me a year, the paint took me a year, and now the short block has actually taken me a year. Now, it, it, it's not that it took me a full year to do it. I have uh, other passions as well that I kind of got into motorcycles, vintage motorcycle restoration. I actually have got some things done, but now I'm actually timing out on that and going back to the Broncos and finishing at least this Bronco before spring. Now follow us on this build series because intermittently between the old Bronco rebuild footage and the new Bronco build and wheeling footage, we're going to be putting out a lot of content that hopefully you'll like. And if you do, subscribe to our channel. Um, we're just a husband and wife team working in the garage every day. We'd love to have you guys along. And for my OG subscribers that have been around for three years and watched me not get very far with this vehicle, I promise you, we're on, we're in a seam now to where we can actually start getting things done. So thank you for hanging out with us. And everybody else, thank you for joining us in this last year. And that's a wrap from Alpine Garage. We're getting excited. 
tomorrow I'm going to be bringing you more of this old Bronco content. And check the end screen for the last three years of build videos, including painting this thing.